We start off this morning talking about uh, understanding the yield components that drive soybean yields. So a lot of farmers get frustrated with where their soybean yields are and want to see improvement in yields, but maybe really don't understand how the plant works. So what we're doing this morning is just kind of taking a step back and saying, do I really understand how the plant works and what can I do to start to impact the yield components? So we break it down and talk about the amount of pods per plant, the amount of seeds in every one of those pods, and then of course the, the weight of the seed itself. So those are the yield components that we're trying to enhance to improve yields. Well, one of the things is actually looking at how do I manage growth. So one thing we know is that a big growthy bean cannot necessarily lead to good yields. So usually if a bean plant gets real tall, the actual amount of pods on that plant aren't very good. So we see yields aren't great. So how do we manage growth and not get too growthy of a plant? So there's things through stress during a vegetative stage that it actually can enhance that. Now as we get into the reproductive stages, now we're focusing all on how to protect that yield that we potentially have. So your mindset of how you treat a bean early in the season, vegetatively versus reproductively, really changes. One of the things that we're looking at is, can I basically mechanically stress a bean with a big land roller, field roller? So we're doing some plots there, working with the Michigan Soybean Promotion Committee through a grant through them to look at that. And we're actually seeing some pretty neat enhancements. So I'm actually running a land roller over growing beans at that first trifoliate or V1 stage, and we're actually seeing you know, two and a half to three bushel yield enhancements on doing that. Part of the yield gain from what we've looked at in the field is coming from an improvement in less harvest loss. So I'm not leaving as many beans in the field uh, where I've leveled out the fields and maybe pushed down the rocks. But the other part is actually coming through the change in how we've changed that plant. So as we roll over that bean and it stresses that bean, it actually forces it to branch more and have internodes that are closer together. We end up with more total pods on a plant. So we've seen some pretty neat yield enhancements by something as simple as that. So that's another thing that we're looking at is the variety type. Is it more of an inline bean or more of what we'd call a bushy bean? So genetically, you'll have a bean that's going to stay a little bit more upright or you're going to have a bean that's going to bush out more. So one thing what we're looking at now is starting to see how population plays into that. Would I manage population differently in an inline bean versus a bushy bean? Okay. Uh, but at the end of the day, we're looking at things like canopy closure and how that affects it in different changes that we'd maybe potentially make based on that bean itself. So do we not only just want to manage all the soybeans across all my farm the same way or am I getting now very specific that I'm going to do this to this field and something different to a different field based not only on the variety that's there but also the environment that's being grown in. I think scouting is pretty important but what I see happen a lot is that guys just go out there and they really don't know what to look for. So I'm not talking about just scouting for pests. You know, sure, you got to make sure you don't have weeds or disease or insects. You know, that's a given. You've got to maintain that. But I want them to do, whether they're going out in a cornfield, a bean field, or a wheat field, is really try to focus in on what's happening in that field at any given time and how it relates to those yield components. So in soybeans, you know, what's happening with the flowering on that plant? Am I getting pretty uniform flowering within a node or am I seeing a big separation there? Because that's going to affect the overall amount of pods on these plants. So focusing in on what's really happening when you go out there, not just on the normal things, but understanding plant growth and development. I think if we do a better job understanding plant growth and development, we're going to have bigger opportunities to enhance yields. I think in soybeans, I think our yield potential, we're at the very beginning of it. I really do. I think in what we're going to learn over the next five to ten years and how to manipulate a soybean plant, do what we want it to do, I think we can see huge changes. Part of it's going to come from production practices, but part of it's going to come from understanding how this plant works from a plant physiology perspective and things that we'll start to do specifically to different timings of that plant to get overall enhanced yields. But I think we're on the front side of a big change in technology coming for soybeans. I believe that there will be an industry in the plant growth regulator side potentially to really help us out there too. So just something to keep your eyes and ears out for. Okay.